A brain split, in which is shown that consciousness is divided if the brain is split. Two minds are housed in one head, each musing its own destiny. Each day they bond to sing in tune, but strife can break their harmony. One song turns two, their tune is shred. And so it was, a shore of servants chanted, standing around a man in mourning, and at each beat a boy flayed him with a violin bow. With clenched teeth, the man turned and spoke to Galileo. I called for you to show you my discoveries, so you can testify that I am not out of my mind. It was the wild prince of Enosa. The first discovery was long ago, said the prince. It was one of my servants, whom I had taught to play at a young age. His right hand was a marvel, the nimblest hand that ever touched the clavichord. But his left hand, fee, that hand was like a hoof, as if a brute had struck the keys, as if an angel and an animal were housed in the same body. So when the time had come, I asked my doctor to find out by opening the skull. And when Salerno did as I had told him, we saw his brain. And this is what we saw. The angelic mind that drove the masterly right hand dwelled to the left, not to the right, as had been thought before. The prince raised a large glass vase. Inside was the servant's skull the brain preserved intact, but in the skull was only the left hemisphere. On the right, said the prince, was emptiness and negation, the emptiness that marks the devil. Devil or not, thought Galileo, that rather proved that half a brain was good enough for one full mind, a mind that could both speak and play and do the multitudinous things a mind can do. But Galileo could not think further. With a wink, the prince released the servants and led him down a dark spiral staircase. Inside the crypt, a recess in the wall held two scarnified bodies, a man and a woman. In the middle was a marble table, and there, shrouded by a veil that also seemed of marble, was a young man, his arms outstretched high over his head his skull wide open. Salerno was behind it, spidery and dark, handling two copper grids made of tiny tubes, which were connected to two large vats nearby, one full of ice, the other full of boiling water. The servant could not keep his eyes perfectly still, whispered Salerno, so I applied a paste of my own making. Since then, He has been staring straight ahead. This is my most remarkable discovery, said the prince to Galileo. The servant whom you see here rest can use both hands with perfect independence and has done so since he was a child. But halfway through every piece he played, perhaps because the devil is envious of perfection, he stiffened, screamed and foamed shaken by seizure, and thus his skills have come to nothing. So at my orders, the prince continued, Salerno opened his skull to see whether the left and the right brain were connected, as they are in all corpses, by thick callous fibers straddling across the midline, or they were separated like two musicians, man and wife, who severed all relationships but they still live and sing in the same house. Salerno is a magician, said the prince. He opened the skull alive and without causing pain. For him I crafted a covering of Venetian crystal to protect the brain, to watch it work when it will play. And yet we were surprised, said the prince. The two hemispheres were not estranged but connected, just as they usually are. Salerno then constructed these capillaries of copper, which can be turned cold and warm in a few instants, 
by flushing them with water that is icy or hot. If you freeze the whole surface of the brain, Signor Galileo, said Salerno, all the animal spirits disappear. He turns blind and deaf, mute and paralyzed, just like a corpse. But if you freeze the right brain only, as I am doing now, you'll see his left arm fall, flaccid, as if inert and devoid of life. Indeed, the arm fell down and lay to rest on the marble veil at the servant's side. While his right brain is stunned by the cold, his left brain is alive, and his right hand can play the most moving of songs. Tell the visitor who you are, the prince ordered the servant. I am Ishma, the desolated one, he said, as if under a spell. Now watch, exclaimed the prince, while pulling a rope to unveil a large marble complex, which stood in front of Ishma's staring eyes. Tell what you see, Ishma, said the prince. I see the body of a nymph, radiant of beauty, but veiled with modesty. Her face is sweet to me. Do you see anything else? asked the prince. No, said Ishma. She should be crowned with lilies. The Garden of Eden should embrace her, and birds should sing her praise. Do you feel unwell, Ishma? No, replied Ishma. Nothing hurts me, but I can't move my eyes. You'll be able to move them soon enough said Salerno, and then addressing Galileo. In this way, with the eyes straight ahead, his left brain only sees what is right of the middle, and his right brain sees just what's on the left side, so he can ask each brain intimate private questions without letting the other one know. It's clear enough, thought Galileo. The left hemisphere is quite enough to uphold one consciousness. A consciousness that sees and hears, that thinks and speaks. You need two legs to walk. One hemisphere is enough to think. And yet something was missing. It was a consciousness that only saw the right side of the sculpture. It's time to switch, said the prince. To saw Salerno, he ordered. Salerno moved the icy copper grid over the left brain and applied the warm grid over the right brain so that it could recover its spirits. His right brain does not speak as well, the prince warned Galileo. Say who you are, ordered the prince after a while, when he saw that the servant had raised the left arm and lowered the right. L, said the servant's right brain, and then, after a long pause, God himself. Did anything happen to you, El? Do you feel strange? No, said El, again after a pause. Have you changed? No, said El. And what do you see in front of you? It took some time, but then El hesitantly said, Man, beast. What is next to the man? Nothing, said El. Do you see anything else? asked the prince. Man beast, said El. The right hemisphere too, then, thought Galileo, has all it takes to uphold one consciousness, a consciousness that sees and hears, thinks and speaks, though it speaks slowly. But this time, it was a consciousness that saw only the left side. Now watch again, said the prince. Heat both his brains, Salerno, and do make sure the callous fibers in between are warm. And when Salerno did as he had been told, both arms were raised as if in prayer. The eyes, however, remained closed. Who are you? asked the prince. Call me Ishmael said the servant. I am the one who can hear God. Open your eyes, ordered the prince. The servant let out a frightened scream. 
Why do you scream, Ishmael? said the prince imperiously. What is it that you see? I see them both, prince. I see them both together. I see my lady fair. I see the hoofed swine. The one who mounted her in beastly embrace. I see they twine together. And I am frightened that the reward is coming. The prince touched the servant's eyes with a handkerchief as if to soothe him. A reward has come, Ishmael. Your lady is now pure, and I have cleansed her, so her poor body could be left by her pure soul. The prince was still as mad as ever, thought Galileo, and playing games with his servant's mind, or rather his two minds. The game was interesting, however, the left brain was Ishma and the right one El. Yet when Salerno warned both brains, he did not conjure up both of them separately. Instead, Ishma and El became one consciousness, became one Ishmael, and Ishmael could see the entire statue. What happens if you cool not the brain itself, but just the fibers that connect the two hemispheres? asked Galileo. Salerno was flattered. An astute question. When I did so, he replied, both hands did keep their strength. But Ishmael was gone. Instead, he split into Ishma and El. One conscious of the right side of things, the other of the left side. So consciousness is split when the brain is split, thought Galileo. Then an image came to him. He saw the servant's arms, the left one raising and the right one dropping. Then the other way around, raising and dropping at faster and faster speed. Tell me, Galileo asked Salerno, when you freeze his right brain and warm it, then freeze it and warm it again, and you do it fast, every swing of the pendulum, what does it feel like? Does he feel that he is changing? Or does he think that he remains the same? Each mind, each brain, will soon get used to its prison, not knowing what it's missing, said Salerno. You cannot see behind your back, but nothing seems amiss to you, though if you are a pigeon, surely you would feel half blind. So a man who's blind from birth will never know what seeing is like, will never know what's missing. And if he had been raised alone, he'll think that nothing much is wrong. But like a mole burrow, his days away, unseen and unaware, once I was told, continued Salerno. That savage people in America possesses another sense, a sense besides hearing and sight, and touch and taste and smell, a sense through which they feel within their heads, with startling strength, whether one's words and acts are truthful or are not. Like we can sniff if wine is good or bad, they sense both truth and falsity inside their minds, and when they sense a vivid lie, they crumple to the ground, holding their growling heads. But have you ever felt it missing, this strange sixth sense of truth? Does your own mind feel robbed because it does not have it, and sense an empty urn between your eyes? How would I know? I'll never know all that I am missing, said Galileo. A mind's a universe, indeed, but it's a universe with bounds. One cannot step outside its borders. It does not matter how large it is inside. Yes, said Salerno. So how much mind does a man need? Notes Carlo Gesualdo, Prince of Enosa, almost the same age as Galileo, was noted for his peculiar style, not just in musical matters. He discovered his wife and her lover in flagrante delicto, after butchering them to death with his sword, 
he had their bodies hanged in public from his palace. Later he suffered from depressive bouts, and his young attendants were required to flay him mercilessly. His palace in Naples passed to Raimondo di Sangro, prince of San Severo, a man devoted, like his predecessor, to the singing of young boys and to alchemy. Legend has it that he and his physician Salerno injected a man and a pregnant woman with a secret petrifying substance to obtain the perfect casts of their blood vessels and organs that are kept in the palace's chapel. There are indeed many patients who had to undergo a hemispherectomy and have led a near normal life afterward. The experiment performed by Salerno is inspired with some liberties by the so-called Weida test, in which an anesthetic is injected first into the circulation of the right brain and then to the left to find out what are the independent functions of each hemisphere. Usually the left hemisphere is the one who speaks or speaks much better. Classic experiments by Gazzaniga, Bogen and Sperry demonstrated that when the brain is split each hemisphere sees only one half of the visual field and the other one does not know about it. <laughs>